So just now, actually, I did cover about the greater Kuala Lumpur. According to the data here, you can see, uh, though it's under plan and under construction, it's about 50,000 units in KL. Cranberry, I won't say KL, because we will use the word greater KL. You know, one of my investors told me, I think you shouldn't use KL. It should be greater KL to encompass of Klang, Subang, Sha'alam, Kajang, and Sepang areas. It's a key areas for all the developments. All right. So a good question to be asked by some of my um, my fellows, uh, colleagues, uh, perhaps be the key player in the industry. 50,000 units. Is it oversupply? So sharing with you my experience, no. According to the current trend, we keep uh, receiving the request from the foreign investor. Surprisingly, directly, they approach us, a legal firms, instead of the real estate uh, agencies. So perhaps they need to find out what is the legal uh, issues when they want to start and expand their business in Malaysia. So the first thing, land issues. Next. Okay, now move to Johor. So as far as everyone know, uh, our current album is from Johor, right? So can foresee this five years down the road, uh, Johor will be the hotspot for everything, right? So the reason why, which is the famous one, the YDL data centers, they collaborate with the NVIDIAs uh, for the AI infrastructures of Southern Asia. And the reason deal is Microsoft, they just purchased 100 acres. Surprisingly, actually myself, I feel it's surprised because not much of the foreign investment, especially from like all these uh, you know, US, they would like to fix a term maybe, you know, for them to exit from Malaysia. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, these terms. But surprisingly, Microsoft, they choose to own and acquire the land in Malaysia. I think this is the target for today's all the audience here. If you are from developer sites, definitely you want to target all these big giants, you know, investor from the overseas. All right. Okay, move to the next. I won't touch much on these accessibilities because it's more on the, the consideration for you to develop the industrial park. Okay, next. So talk about the Belt and Road Initiative. I just came back from one of the presentation. I traveled to see uh, under the event, uh, invitation of one of my potential uh, foreign investors. They keep on talking and mention about Malaysia. They will talk about ECRM. Basically, this concept, when I talk to the governments, you know, the, the contact group I have, basically is come based on the concept of Belt and Road Initiative, Yutai Ilu. The concept is from China. So, why is it important transportation? For you to build the good and the, you know, logistics is very important, a good development for the industrial part. It starts from where? A small quiz, huh? maybe I check with someone here. Can I see? So it starts from where? Anyone can answer? And end there. No? Everyone talking about ECRL, ECRL. So it starts from? Yes, Kota Baru and end at Grand, West Port. West Port. So the recent transaction that uh, we also consult the, because the input that required by the the investor, especially for mainland China, they will ask hey, ECRL, we keep on talking about ECRL, Malaysian government. Hey, when are you going to do to complete this? Anyone knows what's the completion stage for ECRL now? You keep on the hot topic, uh. everyone discuss on ECRL. Any ideas? Yes, yes, yes. No, <laughs> you trust your government too much. <laughs> sorry, sorry to talk about this. 64% according to our minister Anthony look, all right? Up to, I think, uh, May, 64%, yeah? That's another long way to go, 40%. So, all right, and as for our meetings, Tengku uh, Dato Sri, Zaifu Abdul Aziz also did mention, so what's the best advantage? Of course, this ECRL is to cut short the time, the transportation time. How, how, any evidence? According to the government, they say it's 2.5 days between Port Clan and, and Pantan Ports. So maybe, you know, the developers here, maybe you can be the first person to try out whether it's true. It's 2.5 days. 
quite a significant uh, uh, time savings. Uh, and then move to the next page. So the benefit of Bell Road Initiative, our ECRL, of course, is for the business developments and unlocking the industrial zone to be set along the railways. Perhaps you can set up a light industry, but no heavy industry uh, along the railways and easier and enhance the method for exports. So I would share with you, this is my real life experience. Most of the uh, foreign investors, they will, first question they will ask me, your ECRL. So maybe this is one of the factors for you to consider when you want to develop your, your industrial park. All right, move to the next stage. Slightly overlapping with the, uh, my fellow speakers just now, which is uh, Juan Zaliza, we touched about the current and future trend. So today, basically, I also will talk about the uh, managed industrial park, maybe from a slightly different angles, which she already covered. So I may perhaps just further enhance to share with you what is the real life experience that uh, we have encountered from the legal perspective. Okay, so what is industrial park? The first two hours, no one's sleeping us. It's a test here. So what is the industrial park? Anyone's hands up to answer? No? No one? All right, never mind. Okay, industrial park is very, very simple. How to define it? There's no exact definitions. I mean, under law. It's zoned and planned for to foster the industrial developments. This is the statement when I discussed with one of the, the government's uh, uh, contacts. They told me, okay, industrial park is being zoned. Very easy. It's not such a zone. So this place is considered industrial park. So, all right, then how do we actually, you know, determine if that piece of land is considered as an industrial category? Anyone to answer? It's a very simple question, but no give, if you answer correctly. Zoning. Sorry? Zoning. Zoning and correct. Land title, yes, exactly. Very simple. Take land titles. For lawyers, our first step, when the developer approached us, Ms. Lane, please check with me the land title. So when I look at the land titles, oh, the category is the other. So the other. The other. Anyone to answer? If your title is the other. Someone told you, and maybe the land owner told you they want to join venture with you. Well, Lena, I mean, zoning. It's not my arm. The industry. But you are not PDG. You are not local authority. So what you need to pay attention with, if the other under NLC, it will be classified as agriculture. So who to consult with? Come to my yes. Come to find Miss Lin. No, just a joke, just a joke. So actually, at your end, as a developer, if you want to save costs on the due diligence process, go consult PDG, conduct the land search. And from your own eyes, you see is the industry. It classified as the industry. Who can the other? All right, this will be a big hit for you uh, to change of the category or etc. I believe some of your uh, maybe property uh, teams or technical teams will understand how painful when they want to apply for it. All right, so okay. Second, just now you mentioned good answer zoning. It comes to the title, they say, okay, but industrial, okay, finish story is it? No, not yet. You need to check the zoning. Zoning, so the zoning is for what purpose? Sometimes you will see, oh, this zoning is for oh, the industry, like for clan. I used to deal with a lot of the invest landlord representative because of the request from my clients. So they do mention to me, some of the places in clan, uh, you can see they designated for heavy industry. You can see it's close to the port. Why? For the discharge, dangerous discharge. You need to find somewhere to dump the, you know, your, your discharge. So it, if someone just the landowner come to you and approach you, please try venture with me. And I guarantee you the zoning can do this one and that one and this one. No. Check with the local authority. If you want it simple, come to the lawyers. We will check it for you. Perhaps you have your own architect, your land surveyor. You can also approach. Because each of the states, especially for the banana like uh, DBKL or all these. They already pre-planned the whole, you know, the city structure, you know, for 
almost future 40 years. They already zone ready. So please check and then check with the local entity whether the zoning is applicable for your developments of the industrial uh, park or not. All right. Okay. So beside these, uh, for example, any others approval you need to check with, especially for the, this one more focus on the end consumers or the end buyers. Uh, you need to check when you want to build a factory, even though the zoning allow you, okay? The title also allow you, but what happened? Your factory is disposing a dangerous hazard or so, you no know, discharge. So you need to uh, get the approval from Environment Impact Assessment EIA approval. I believe everyone here should have heard about this uh, EIA approval. Some of your sales team uh, may just go and approach the, the target group. Hey, my park is very good. I have this logistic, the title is good, zoning is good, everything is good, but you need to advise them the EIA. If not already built factory, they purchase a piece of land in industrial lot from you. The first question actually you need to advise them is the AIA, whether you pass the EIA test. Otherwise, you can't continue. Too bad, unfortunately. So this is my real life experience. One of the mainland China's uh, investor, they come to approach us, they are from Shanghai. Interestingly, they say, Shaping, I want to manufacture the aluminum coil, which is the material to build for constructions. So in their country, Shanghai, Shanghai, because for China, different state also different land law, and they differentiate it by tier. Tier one city, tier two city, Shanghai, Beijing, all this Guangzhou is tier one. Cash rich, <laughs> okay. So of course your target is uh, all these tier one cities investor. They come to us. Our actually our business, uh, you know, and the factory is classified as medium, medium in China. So I assume that my uh, approval in Malaysia should be similar, lah. So, okay. And the developer also told me, no issue one, proceed. Medium. Then they approach me. So as a lawyer, of course, I can't just hear, uh, accept the hearsay evidence. So what I do, I check with the authority, which is MIDI, MIDA, especially MIDA, we approach them. We show all the material and information given by this foreign investor. Unfortunately, they've been classified as a heavy industry in Malaysia. So of course, um, no deal for me, but at least I save, I mean, I save a lot of time and time uh, at the cost for these uh, foreign investors. Otherwise, they may just sign the agreements and you can't meet the CP. So what for? Due diligence is very important for all the legal transactions. You need to deal with the legal issues, the authorities, and also the approval required for you to set up the companies or to own the factories, all right? Title and zoning. Next, just yeah. So what is industrial part? Just now I mentioned already, title and zoning is important. And then it can be classified uh, a very general three category, uh, light industry, medium industry, and heavy industry. So what are the industry categorized? I want a small test. Uh. Everyone here is, seems is a professional because you are from the developer field. So what the industry is classified as light industry? Can you give me some example? Anyone? Yes, correct. I heard about semicon just now mentioned. E and E. So all this is without the discharge of the dangerous uh, hazardous uh, light industry. Medium, actually some gray area here. Just now I mentioned to you already. Manufacturing or aluminum coins. To them they say, no, no, just, just medium. But to the authority, authority, after the assessment, they say no, unfortunately, it's heavy. So if you want to set up your factory, if you can vary only a certain area in plan. You can't do it simply, you know, just choose a part and then enter. So it will fix the operation issue later, being compiled by the governments. Then of course, you'll find a lawyer to fight for you later. All right? All right, so next. Okay, industrial park. Next slide. So this is the, the latest data that I uh, actually, after the interview of some of the, the key players, the real estate agency that we collaborated with, who focus on the industrial park, they told me actually, what's the price? Uh, 600. 600. So among all this, you have some of the competitors. It's almost 600. Industrial park in Malaysia. 
Next. Okay, upcoming trend in Malaysia. MIP, hot topics. In Slangos, it actually not a new term, sir. This concept basically introduced by the state government in year 2020 during the MCOs. And my first case, actually, there's one of the reputable developer come to us. They say, Shating, I want to apply for this MIP and I want to be the first one being certified as an MIP pub. So anyone know in uh, maybe here, who is the first or maybe the only pub being certified as MIP? Maybe my record is uh, not up to date. I have it, I think, up to last year. But I didn't see the attendee from the, the developers who uh, who who really certified as an MIP. Anyone? No. NCT. NCT. Yes, you are right. NCT. NCT is the first. I, I wouldn't say it's the last one. Of course, <laughs> it's the first uh, industrial park being certified as an MIP. Of course, they need to fulfill a long list of the features just now. My fellow speakers already shared with you. You need to pass all this and the compliance, then you will be certified as MIP. And that is actually a guideline on the managed industrial park in Mahasa. You can download from the website itself. Let me check what's the website name. Okay, perhaps you can jot down Jabatan Perancangan Banda dan Desa Negeri Selengo. That's a long list for you to comply with. I wouldn't uh, look overlapping the topics that I, um, the fellow speakers already discussed. So I will move on to the next slides. The requirement to be complied, to be certified as an MIP. So MIP, which is a managed industrial park, uh, the previous uh, speakers had mentioned about, of course, uh, you, you can have a very organized, you know, the zoning area, you already classify it as a single double story, you know, and multi-story perhaps industrial types, you see. All this, I think your target will be more on SME. If you really want to attract the giant investors, for example, just now I mentioned about Microsoft, Micron, uh, what else, the data centers, usually they want to customize. They won't follow your specification, agree? They want to customize it and follow your specification, their specs. I come from US, so okay. I have my long list of specs. You need to follow me. So, if developer, you really want to target this type of uh, giants, I mean, the good investors, the 500 fortunes, you may need to prepare the empty lens. This is the current trend when I deal with the real world experience with most of the foreign investors. They are looking for empty lens instead of the ready built. Okay, fencing wall, limited access control, what else? Common uh, property facility, this is interesting, uh, common uh, property facilities. NCT actually, uh, we deal with them and they share with me, they do have a clubhouse, you know, a clubhouse in the industrial park. So when I heard about this, wow, this is really, you know. So a recreational area, they have gym centers, they have uh, perhaps uh, FME is good. So uh, yeah. You may just develop your, your uh, industrial park, just follow the trends, perhaps you can start building a clubhouse. So NCT, I would say they, perhaps they are the pioneers, but of course not. Um, someone maybe heard about the Hapsang Business Park? Anyone? They do have sharing the same concept, UNW as well. So all this basically we have dealing with them. They also very keen and have the intention to be certified as an MIT. But um, in the process, I would say, I wouldn't say not successful, it's in the process they are applying to comply with the, the, uh, the features and requirements under the MIP guidelines. So MIP guideline, basically, I would say, kudos to the state of governments and the Invest KL, uh, Invest Lango, sorry, they do share with me, they are the pioneers, which is the first state who introduced the guidelines Instead of a lot of state, they keep on talking about managed industrial park, data gardens, you see? But slang on, they execute it. So they have the guidelines, 2020. Enhanced version, maybe you have to check uh, the websites. So perhaps if you want to ease of all your you know, difficulties or issues, you want someone to advise you, come to the lawyer's firm. <laughs> so we, we can guide you from A to Z and work together closely with your project teams for all the submissions, all right? Okay, 
move to the next steps. Uh, okay. Actually, I do prepare the tables. Just yeah, next. Comparing traditional and also MIP. So, what is the keywords for you to differentiate this? Gator gardens. Traditional, maybe you have gator garden as well. Maybe, maybe. And the common areas being maintained by my fellow speakers have shared with you. They have a specific industrial park manager, IPM. So, not everyone can be IPM. Right? This must be qualified. Just like your um, uh, variable, real estate agency, all this. You need to find someone who is qualified. You cannot just appoint. You know, the companies, they claim that I have the capacity, you know, to run your path. But it must be licensed and qualified. Check with the authorities. And with the complete infrastructure, utility, and supporting amenities, I will say more organized. To share it with you, my last time this is in Xi'an, and also we moved to the, 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 largest, the largest industrial park in China. Anyone have any ideas? In which province? You will see a bit. Really amazing. There's a big park there in Suzhou. And luckily, I have, I really uh, very fortunate to follow the delegation teams uh, from the Chinese uh, Chambers of Commerce. We pay a visit to the Suzhou Industrial Park. I think it's the, a good uh, example for us to learn and to follow. Perhaps after today's the talk, you may want to suggest to your management levels, allow you to to, to, to travel overseas, to have on-site viewing on how others, uh, you know, country, they promote the managed industrial parks uh, concepts. It's pretty different. I would say it's much more developed. Uh, sorry to, to, to share with you these innovations. I'm really impressed and amazed how they run the entire and how the government's actually helping them to promote these concepts. All right, okay, move to the next. So I won't touch much, it's on the halal parks. So any uh, developers is running a halal park here? Anyone? You cannot simply <laughs> certify yourself as a halal park. Of course, the very basic uh, requirements, uh, eligibility criteria, you must be active in the halal industry. So just now the THP and step is a very good example. I share with everyone. Any other halal is a uh, Pinay International Halal Park. Slango Hala Hub and also the Pedas Hala Parks. So their targets is actually certain, certain, uh, just now I share with you the carbon hygiene and stacks, uh, PHP and stack. They target all these giant investors from overseas. Food, Ajinomoto, Likam Kis. So, yeah. And all this food actually is they target the Hala markets. So you have your, actually have your target group if you are developing the Hala Parks. But of course, you need to comply with all the criteria. You may need to get the expert to, to advise you for the compliance. All right, not mistaken. High value knowledge worker with at least 15% of the entire workforce, you need minimum two HALA compliance officer inclusive. So this is the one information I can share with you. All right, move to the next slide. Okay, come to the main focus today. Method of disposing, managing, acquiring, or occupying of the industrial lots. I may start with the perspective from the, the target groups. So you can see what's the needs from your target groups when you're dealing with them. Instead of from the perspective of the developers, of course, your main concern is the commercial, the commercial issue, the first thing your main concern is hit my KPI, report to my boss. So this year, my sales target, I hit. But how to achieve this? It's not just simply, you know, reach out the, the target group that you want to, you know, target. Of course, from uh, maybe high levels of negotiation when you have with them. So I will share with you some of my experience when we are dealing with uh, the, 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 the foreign investors or perhaps the occupiers or the acquirer of the industrial law. They do share with me the issue they face when they're dealing with the developers. All right. Okay. First, all right. Just young. Next slide. Okay. Methods of disposing, managing, acquiring. The very typical way, the straightforward way, acquire. I have a chat actually just now uh, outside when during the coffee session and the morning session. Some of the people told me, you're shutting out right sale. Just sell. I sell my land. 
I sell. I sell my lot. SBA, direct sale, harvest the 100 units. So I get my KPI, finish the stories. But this is not the case. Maybe you can try to explore other ways, joint ventures. Just now I mentioned about Kulim Tech Park. Kulim Tech Park, they're actually quite smart. They are the landowners. They invite the investor from our three giants group, EBF, Co-op, PMBs. We are acting for one of the, 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 the funders and then dealing with the Osram. So being the landowners, basically, you may also get a portion of the benefit they generate in futures down the road 20 years, 30 years. You won't know, instead of outright sales. So acquisition is by way of SBA. Another method, leasing tenancy. I don't think this is a new term for the developers uh, here. You can lease, lease the land, or you let out the land to them. That's it. How to earn more? If you have the capacity of as being a contractor or maybe you know, on the construction area, you can try to explore. That's another option come together with the leasing concept. BPF, build to suit. Some of my foreign investors will say, hey, I have the piece of land now. Who is helping me to build my factory? The famous brand we have helping with, right? Nestle. They already foresee, they want to, you know, just lease for 20 years. But they look for the developers or the owner of the park or whatsoever industrial you know, not, uh, uh, operators. I need someone has the capacity to help me to build as well. So they come with the package, lease and build to suit. So it's a, I would say it's another investment you can explore for some of the developers here. Instead of just outright sale, SBA, Tapaya, the company, the parlor, and then leasing, you can come with the BTS, build to suit, sales and lease back. Sell, sell to them, they become the owner, then lease back. So you can quickly get the cash flow. So this is all the structures, I would say, in the markets, a lot of the convincing lawyer, they may have some misconcept. Okay, it's just a standard SBA for you to address all these issues. It couldn't be because for industrial law or commercial law, it's not governed under the statutory schedule G or H under Housing Development Act. There is no 100% uh, similar SBA to address all this. You need to be very cautious when you do the drafting. But due to the time limitation, I can't share with you how to deal with the negotiations, you know, when you do the drafting with the target groups, especially some of the high levels uh, foreign investor. They won't adopt your templates, SBA. They want to customize it. Next. Okay, transactional documents require. Next, just here. Okay. SBA. Manage industrial park. Of course, you will come to step with the DMC. You let people to occupy the park that operated by you. How to, you know, to regulate them? Let's talk like this. Find the booking form or say you have your own house rule someone enter into your house need to follow your rules how to formalize this dmc deed of mutual covenants again there's no hundred percent sometimes you just say i can i just adopt my previous project templates i customize it so this is the the, the main issues always when you develop a project it's better for you to engage the experts I wouldn't say a legal profession, maybe someone who are able to advise you from A to Z, all the angles, how to protect you as a developer, especially the MC, the main, the main clause that you need to pay attention is to collect the maintenance charges and how to ensure these maintenance charges, the clauses, it keep on, you know, binding on the subsequent buyers. This is the clauses I always, always get from the developers. Shutting, I have the issues. My DMC actually, I just adopt the standard templates. But I never think of how to buy the subsequent buyers. I drive and then, you know, the person just on sale or online or you know, to someone else. How to buy the subsequent buyers? You need to come up with a certain clause to formalize all this. To ensure that that's a procedure for you to adopt. How to ensure that the payment, the deposits for the maintenance charges is going to inherit it, you know, one by one. And buy of the subsequent buyers and how to allow you to adjust the rate when you sign is by them, you know you don't want to face any dispute later on someone complains to the developers you wish of your emc you just simply impose the rate on them all right next okay 
uh, maybe just yeah, go back. I need to share with one of the experience we have faced uh, parties. Interesting. Foreign investor always ask me, hey, developer is this access company. How come my SBA is the tripartite agreement? Hey, I start with someone, is it is it, a con arrangement? Is it someone just try to con it? No. So as a developer, you need to make sure your SBA, the procedures, you want to enter into the tripartite, so the landowners, you are just the developers and enter into agreements. So this will become the tripartite. And what's the effect if tripartite or just two contractual party developers usually will just you know get the power attorney for you to sell right or to lease so what is the difference and the impact between these two i would say privy to the contract and recently we faced one transaction we cannot close after two months of the negotiation because the the purchasers keep on insisting on this they need to pull in the landowner why anyone can answer i already have the power attorney ma. i sign ma. As a developers, why I need to pull in the tripartite? And these developers actually, uh, no, these uh, purchasers are actually acquiring about 200 million the retail transaction, empty lands from a developers to develop an uh, industrial uh, lot. It's kind of uh, for investment. They pull in because the management told me, I want to sue this landowner. If the rent and warranty under SBA, they are also, I can pull in them as a contractual parties. Tripartite, they are privy to the contract. So you can see, it's not simply uh, you just add the, the, the parties into your SBA just because of the procedure, just because the previous is doing it this way. That's a liability. If you are the landowner, you are the developer, property, these two companies will soon become the co-defendants. If anything goes sour, uh, the relationships. So that's the impact. All right? Description of property, Another story to share. Same uh, case scenario, just now I share with you. Very interesting. My client actually they do inspection because it's a big plot of land. Do inspection. So I have a very question, question I follow to the site visit. I say, hey, your litigation team, any land surveyor here? He said, no, I think I just with my own eye, I inspect. Uh, maybe later, uh, the land surveyor, later, later, later. I said, no, you better get the land being surveyed. Because it's a big plot of land. And your, your CP period, your SBA, all this can be dragged for, I don't know, six months, 12, 12 months, because of all the consent approval, all this, you know, EPU approval, consent approval. So, how? Why I stress the point, land must be surveyed. Description of your property. Three things you need to check as a developer. Either itself, the measurement, the accurate in your SBA, match with your land surveys result or not. And find out in my case here, unfortunately, a small, small, small piece of land encroachment. The border, that is a temple. One feet, the fencing. So they panic already. Oh, you should think. There's a land encroachment. How? How to deal with this? From the purchaser perspective, of course, I want to adjust your. Yeah, it's a very minor, but perhaps I want to adjust your purchase price because you are not selling me the same piece of land which is shown in your SBA. All this, uh, don't take it easy because we have uh, come across with the issue after SBA sign. This issue never been dealt with between both parties ended up in court to claim for the compensations. So it's not just a schedule for you. Uh, you may want to pay attention now on from the, maybe just to, to remind your sales teams, especially when you're selling off, not the managed, managed perhaps no issue, subdivided, but we can't guarantee someone within the completion period of your SDA, someone just trespass, just, you know, the squatters. You won't know. After the survey, only you find out the measurement actually is less. So how to deal with this? Our experience now uh, to share with you by two ways. The harsh way, of course, by court. Lah. Court orders, ask the temple, remove for sensitive. Lah. And, uh, you know, um, get the court order to, to deal with the land encroachment. Of course, all this time consuming. One, two years, you need to fight in court. So transactional way, as a developer, for you to negotiate with the purchaser, what's the best way? Deal with it in the SBA. Because sales and purchase is a contractual document, always come based on the 
willing buyer, willing seller basis. We always start in this. We will, of, of course, if I act for the developers, I will tell them, I'm selling this based on the as is, where is basis. It can work both ways. Eh? Maybe advantage you, maybe don't. Now, most of the time, the lawyer will just insert the clause. As is, where is. You know, all the samples, they also as is, where is. So how it works? As is, where is. Just now I mentioned already, land surveyors and the inspection is important. As is, where is, at what point of time? When you inspect, when you sign the SBA, or when you deliver the VP. This is all the argument points when we uh, dealing with the negotiation between the, the, the MIS and also the developers. Sometimes it can start, you know, for almost two, two, two months, three months, just to dealing with these issues. Because it's important for them. They need a VP from you. It's not something subject to any encumbrances. Maybe a uni post, you know, from Massis TMB, there's a substation there. So how to deal with all this? You may need to think of it today. So, all right, and uh, hi, up. <laughs> so, uh, okay, um, uh, just, yeah. just a quickly, uh, let me wrap up the, the, the talk today. So, leasing agreement, same things as uh, you have to, the selling terms that you need to pay attention with. Of course, I don't have time to share with you uh, what is the selling terms. Maybe, perhaps in future, uh, my, my, my firm actually, we have a, regularly have a free webinars. You can sign up, you can contact me later on during the lunch time we do share our knowledge and the experience how we're dealing with all this i won't say it's certificate but i learn i learn from my developer clients i learn from my end buyers clients so for very interesting and last point i want to cover rental 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 any issue that just a simple one maybe basic rental as a developer i want to claim basic basic rentals what else you can get from the Occupiers. I learned this from my US based uh, foreign investor. They do have this concept called single net, double net, and triple net. Anyone heard about this concept?